We're at lesson 12.1d using the complement of an event. The word complement is a noun. It's something that completes or makes perfect. The complement of an event is a set of all outcomes in the sample space that are not included in the event. So if we had a spinner and our event would be to spin and get red, well, then we have a one-third chance, because there's three sections, of getting red. The complement of not getting red means we would get a blue or a yellow. That would be two-thirds. And it's perfect, because the one-third plus the two-thirds is equal to one whole. The complement completes the event. Together, they make one whole. So, for an event and its complement, the sum of the probabilities of an event and its complement equals 1. If we have a number cube and our event is to roll a 3, well, there's six sides to the number cube and there's only one 3, so we'd have a 1 6 probability of that event happening. The complement for it not to be 3 would be 5 sides out of the 6 sides, it would be 5 6. And if we add the event 1 6 plus the complement, the 5, 6, it's going to equal 6, 6, which equals 1. We have rolling a 3 for our event, and not 3 would be rolling anything but 3, a 1, 2, 4, 5, or 6. The rule for complements is the probability of the event plus the probability of the complement of the event is equal to 1. We can apply probabilities to situations involving random selection, such as drawing a card from a shuffled deck, rolling a number cube, picking an item from a bag without looking, or choosing a section on a spinner, then spinning. In a full deck of cards, there are 13 diamonds, and there's 52 cards in the full deck. There are 13 diamonds in a standard deck of 52 cards, so what is the probability of not getting a diamond if we select one card at random? We have the event, picking a diamond, plus the complement of the event, not picking the diamond, is equal to 1. Since there are 13 diamonds in the full deck, we would have the probability of the event as 13 50 seconds. If we add that with the complement of not picking a diamond, it should equal 52 50 seconds as same numerator and denominator as one whole. We can use algebra to solve this with additive inverses. We subtract 13 50 seconds from both sides of the equation. We subtract it here, and we're going to make a zero pair, aren't we? A positive 32 50 seconds and a negative 32 50 seconds, and we've eliminated that. Now, when we subtract it from this side, we get 39 50 seconds. We know the complement, the probability of not picking a diamond, would be 39 50 seconds. We can simplify that to 3 fourths. So it's likely that we will not pick a diamond. Here we have four aces, and we can turn them over and shuffle them. The probability of picking an ace would be four fourths. It would be one whole. The probability of not picking an ace would be zero fourths. It would be zero because they are all aces. We have a zero chance of it not being an ace. An event that is certain will have a complement that is impossible. It's certain that we will pick an ace because they're all aces. And for it to not be an ace would be zero. That would be impossible. That's the only thing we could pick is an ace. So an event that is certain, picking an ace, will have a complement that is impossible, not an ace. So on our number line, zero is impossible. If it's close to zero, around here, it's unlikely. If it's half or 50%, it's equally likely as not likely. And if it's close to 1, it's likely. And if it's 1 or 100%, it's certain. So we've learned the probability of an event is the ratio of the number of outcomes in the event to the total number of outcomes in the sample space. 
So we could actually draw a line, and that would be the numerator and that would be the denominator. The probability of an event is also called the relative frequency of the event. So the relative frequency of picking an ace of hearts would be one-fourth. There's four cards, there's one ace of hearts, so it would be one-fourth. We're finished with 12.1 and we're going to be moving on to 12.2. Next, in 12.2a, we're going to be finding experimental probability. I'm so proud of you for watching math videos and I really want you to enjoy the rest of your day. But I also want you to join me for the next lesson. Bye.